Hello and welcome back to another video. I'm Charlie and today we will be repairing and restoring the Macintosh Color Classic. So I recently purchased this on eBay and it finally came and if you didn't watch my last video I unboxed it and took it out and tried seeing if it worked and tried testing with another motherboard and it does work. So thankfully it's none of the analog components that are the issue. However, this thing needs a lot of work, especially on the inside because it's extremely dusty. So anyway, so what we're gonna be trying to do is we're gonna be trying to clean up and hopefully repairing this original Macintosh Color Classic board. We're also going to be um, dusting out the insides and we're gonna be doing the whole exterior and possibly retro writing the keyboard and the case and stuff, but we'll have to see, um, we'll have to see how the video plays out. So, um, yeah, if you look at it, look around, it's extremely dirty. There's, uh, tape marks, there's labels, there's, uh, more tape, and it's a lot yellowed. There's even pencil marks in certain places, and it's not pretty at the moment, but I'm hoping that we'll be able to restore this back to its former glory and make it look almost like new again. So, without further ado, let's get All right. started. So, the first thing we're going to work on is the keyboard and the mouse. So, I'm fully aware that this is not the original keyboard this Color Classic came with when it was new. This is, in fact, a Apple II GS keyboard, which came with the um, Apple II GS and II GS WAS edition computers. Um, the only reason why I have it is because this computer came with this keyboard. I'm not sure why it, or how it got to this, but... We're just going to be cleaning it up today because it's kind of dirty, it's also pretty yellow, and I want it to look nice. So, that's exactly what we're going to do. So, um, if you look closely, um, there's some dirt on it in certain places. The whole keys, um, all the key, most of the key, all the keys seem fine. It's just the space bar and these outer class case pieces need to be taken off and retrograded. And we're also going to be taking out all the keycaps so we can see if we so we can like vacuum on the inside. So that's what we're going to be doing. So the way I take out keys now, I know there's a special tool to take out the keys, but what I like to do is use a screwdriver because I'm too cheap to buy one of those tools. So what you want to do, just want to put it under and just pop right out. There's no springs, no nothing extra, and just be careful not to uh, break the uh, little plungers because. Uh, they're kind of hard to replace. So, uh, and yeah, once you get the hang of it, you can all, it's a lot easier. So, uh, yeah, let's get started. So the inside of the keyboard isn't as dirty as I anticipated, but so what I'm going to do instead is I'm just going to get a Q-tip and cover it with some alcohol and then just clean the insides. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, oh, do I want to spray it? No, I'm going to spray the Q-tip first, just in case. Uh, that didn't work, but basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do this and just clean all the crevices of the keyboard. And I'm not taking off like the enter key or anything because they don't need a they don't need to be retrobrighted and I don't want to damage them by taking them off because I might because I probably will so I'm just gonna leave them in and they're and it's probably not that dirty underneath them anyway so I'm not gonna worry too much I'm just gonna clean all these up now. Now that the keyboard is clean, we're just going to take it apart. So, old Apple keyboards really aren't that difficult to take apart. All you really need to do is flip them around and you'll find three screws, which is pretty nice. So, uh, I'll just get my screwdriver. So, to take off the bottom screws, I'm using a size one screwdriver. And it seems to fit perfectly. Oh, that's the wrong one. So, twist it to the right, or just to the left. And now it should be able to easily open up the keyboard. So this top part came off with the Apple logo and everything. So we're just gonna put that to the side. 
the rest of it should come off. I'm just going to flip it over and the uh, rest of the keyboard screws came out. They all have these little washers on the end of them. So I'm going to make sure not to lose those. Uh, the third one doesn't have a washer, so the washer must be still in there. And uh, no, it isn't. It's actually right here. Never mind. Yes, yeah, so that goes there. And now we should be able to take uh, the rest of it off. Like the rest of it out of here now. The bottom case. There we go. Kind of hurts because there's spikes at the bottom. But yeah, here's the bottom case. It's a bit dirty, so we're going to take care of that later. And finally, I want to get this part out because this is like a, just a decorative piece. There should be screws. Or actually, no, there's just some tabs, which is perfect. So just get a flat tip. Uh, push. Excellent. And the other one's just pop right out. And there we go. Decorative piece out. There we go. Disgusting too. And now we're done. With, and now, uh, this piece fell. I don't know what key this goes to, but I put this to the side just in case. So now we don't need this anymore. So we'll just put it to the side. I also just realized that we haven't done this mouse at all either. So I already have a mouse like this that's already in pretty good shape. So I think I'm just gonna use that mouse. And the reason why I don't wanna do this mouse is because you actually have to poke a hole in the label, as you can see, because there's two screws here. And I don't really wanna poke the label in this one. So I'm just gonna use the mouse I already have. This is the mouse I already have. As you can see, it's a lot better looking than this mouse. This is more of like a natural color. This is more yellowed color. I think I might get to this if I ever want to, but for now I'll just leave it aside because I already have another mouse that doesn't really matter. All right, so now getting to the computer, it has this label on the front of it which are basically just instructions to how to turn it on. And obviously I already know how to turn on a Mac and I don't really like how it looks. So we're gonna be uh, removing this. Uh, alrighty, so yeah. So I'm just gonna peel off the tape. Hopefully it'll be forgiven. I'm just using my fingernail here. I don't wanna use a screwdriver because I don't wanna scratch it. Yeah, this is gonna be a lot harder than I thought. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take off the label and then I'm going to go under here where it isn't sticky and then just peel it off from there. Well, that sort of worked. As you can see, there's so much grime. There's just a line of grime from where the tape once was. Yeah, that worked a lot better than just trying to peel it from the... Uh, and yeah, there we go. Label's off. And now we should actually clean up the computer. We're gonna start off with some uh, isopropyl alcohol. And this is usually what I do when I first start uh, the restoration. And if the isopropyl alcohol doesn't do anything, I'll move to denatured alcohol because isopropyl alcohol is like the first step I always do. Denatured is the second step because uh, it's a lot stronger and sometimes I don't need a do that much. Also, there's this line of Sharpie here that just went away a bit, so that's a good sign. So I actually think I'm gonna switch to the denatured alcohol, because as you can see, it's basically just pencil marks and there's a line of sh Sharpie. So I think maybe this was um, in a kid's room or something, or maybe it was in a school or I don't know, but I'm gonna put some denatured alcohol on here and just scrub away. And if you're wondering, you can buy denatured and isopropyl alcohol at any, the denatured alcohol I got at the hardware store and the isopropyl alcohol I got at a uh, drug store or medicine store because isopropyl alcohol in the medicine industry is actually also used for uh, like cuts and stuff. So like disinfecting cuts and things. So that's why you'd find it there. And they're like, and the isopropyl alcohol is incredibly cheap, as well as the hydrogen peroxide, which is used for retrobriting. They're both like uh, 99 cents for a, a container. So uh, yeah, anyway, I'm gonna continue doing this and I'll be back when I'm done. All right, so now we're at the top of the computer. It has like this sort of foam tape, and I guess this was at one point double-sided tape, but whatever was sitting on top of this was ripped off. I'm 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 convinced that it might have been like maybe a, 
a set of buttons for like controlling different things or even an Apple II, II disk drive if this was used as a disk drive but with an Apple IIe card but the expansion slot is still there and too lazy to put it back in so I don't think it was. Maybe it was used for like an external floppy drive, hard drive, it really depends. But anyway, what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna get this off the screwdriver. Well actually I'll start by trying to peel it off and I don't think it will come off if I peel it. Well, it is working a bit, but I think I'll just do a screwdriver. I don't want to damage it that much, but screwdriver seems to be the only method, but I'm still going to be pretty careful. Or you know what? I think I'll actually just use my fingernails for this because I don't want, I really don't want to scratch. All right, so the rest of it doesn't really seem to be coming off. So what I'm gonna try is a method I haven't really tried too much in the past. I'm gonna be trying to apply some WD-40. So basically what you do here is you spray a bit on, like on like this, and you let it, and you just rub it around, let it sit, and then you try hitting it again with the paper towel. So I'm gonna be trying that, so I'll be back. Ew. So while the WD-40 is curing, and taking away the sticky stuff. What I'm gonna try to do is bring this board back to life. So I have no idea what the issue can be with this board, um, but my but my first instinct is to clean up everything. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna clean up all the contacts, take out all the chips and clean them. And, and uh, because I know that it's not the analog components that are stopping the board the computer from powering on because I already tried it with the Mac TV board and it worked and I want to get this working again so I can use it normally without having a weird screen so that's what I'm going to try to do and I also looked on the hard drive um, when the when the last video ended after the last video ended and I found a lot of really interesting things on it like software and game related stuff and I really want to try it out so I'm real so I'm really hoping I can get this board back working so to clean this board up, I'm gonna be using some um, isopropyl alcohol, and I've done this with Windex before. And the Windex can create, and apparently the Windex can create some unwanted oxidation, making the board rendering the board useless. And I made that mistake once when I cleaned up my Mac TV board, and it didn't work anymore. But when I cleaned it back up with the alcohol, it worked again. So I'm gonna be using the alcohol. I'm not gonna use the denatured alcohol because I don't think it needs to be that strong. To clean up the whole board, and I don't. And I also don't want it to damage the board because it can be a bit strong at times. So we're just gonna clean it with the isopropyl alcohol. So I'm gonna clean up all the traces and as you can see, not even like a second in, you can already see that some of the areas look a lot better. And yeah, already it's getting pretty dirty. So I'm gonna clean up this whole board and clean all the pins and contacts of everything and I'll be back. Alright, the board has just been cleaned up, and I cleaned up all the chips and everything, and the contacts, so let's see if it works. Hmm, still doesn't work. I think I'm going to see if I can clean it a bit more, and then we'll try again. Alright, second attempt. I've deep cleaned the board once again, and I also um, cleaned up the uh, socketed chips and the uh, pins that connect the board to the computer itself. So, uh, let's try powering it on now.
and it's still dead. Last attempt, I put the board in soapy water and deep cleaned all the areas with baking soda and a toothbrush. After putting almost two hours into the board, I put I soaked it in dishwasher fluid, which is good because it has anti-corrosive properties, has a bunch of other things that should help bring the board back to life. I also let it out to dry. I also um, cleaned the whole thing with rubbing alcohol before and after to finish up everything. I cleaned the sockets, I cleaned everything, even around the capacitors, and everything's perfectly fine. There's no, there's no um, electrolyte anywhere on the board, and I'm 100% confident that this should work. All right, so let's see if it actually works. So, turning it on, okay. Just gonna take some hot dust away. A moment of truth. Three, two, one. Yes! Success! Hell yeah. Screen's fine. Oh my god, I can't believe I did it. Actually, screen doesn't look that good, but... See the cursor? Screen's a bit weird. It's a lot like the Mac TV screen. It's a bit flickery and everything. Probably caps, but... Oh, there we go. Now it's a bit better. Damn it! Now the hard drive doesn't work. That kind of sucks, because there's a lot of stuff on that hard drive that I really want to take a look at, because it was working, so. So what I did now is I took the computer outside, and as you can see, there was a whole lot of dust on the inside. So I decided to buy some compressed air from Staples, and I started to blow the dust out. And as you can see, there's a lot of dust coming off. You couldn't really see it on camera, but it's definitely there in person. There's a lot of it. I was hoping that this would resolve the screen issues, and screen issues did stop um, did, did stop after this, but I'm not sure if this was the resolution of the problem, but it definitely um, makes me feel a lot better that the inside is a lot cleaner now. Alright, so it's now time to... Uh, prepare the retrobrite treatment. So basically, as you can see, this keyboard is extremely yellow. Well, you can't, it doesn't really show up on camera. It's a lot easier to see in real life. So we're gonna be retrobriting this. And my method of doing it is the tub with hydrogen peroxide method. So I bought two bottles of hydrogen peroxide. So the trick is, is that you don't wanna fill it completely with hydrogen peroxide. You wanna do like maybe a third of what, like a third of hydrogen peroxide, the rest water. And that's usually what I do. So anyway, so the parts, we only have three parts we need to retrobrite. We have the, the case of the keyboard. We have this top bezel part of the keyboard. We also have this keyboard, this decorative keyboard piece for, from the keyboard. And finally we have the space bar. So the space bar I might actually put in a separate plastic bag because, or just the smaller pieces in general, but then the bigger pieces we need to put in the tub because they're larger. All right, so I got a plastic bag and basically what we're gonna be doing here, is I'm gonna open up this uh, bottle of hydrogen peroxide. And hydrogen peroxide is like $2 a bottle and I bought mine at CVS. Uh, I, I, I thought I remembered it being like 99 cents. That might have been their rubbing alcohol, but I don't know. They come in really similar bottles. Anyway, what I'm gonna do is just pour some of it in here. And then I'm gonna put some uh, water in it. And yeah, that should be good enough. So, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put two pieces in the bag, and then we're gonna put it out in the sun for like a couple hours. Uh, for, I'd, I'd say like six hours in direct sunlight is best, and we'll let it cure. So now that that's done, we'll put that to the side. You have to get the pieces as well, like facing up to the sun, but that should be fine, good enough. But anyway, so now for the actual thing. Uh, I cleaned up the pieces. I recommend cleaning the pieces because um, 
for obvious reasons. I mean, if you care enough to retrobrite it, you should probably care enough to also clean it. So basically what we're just gonna do is pour some of this hydrogen peroxide in here. I think I'm just gonna do the rest of the bottle. I really didn't do that much, but hopefully that'll be good enough. Uh, I'm gonna put some water in it too. All right, so tip is that you really don't need that much. You just need enough to cover both of the pieces completely. And as I can tell, and I can tell I just need a bit more. So I think I'm just gonna fill the rest of it with uh, more hydrogen peroxide. So just pour it in. And yeah, that should be good enough. Anyway, um, oh yeah, I also wanted to mention that the ozone gas inside of the, um, inside is also plays a crucial role. So you don't really don't need that much. And then all you have to do is just put a top over this and then just leave it out in the sun along with the other pieces. So now that we've done that, let's actually put these out in the sun. And here they are out in the sun. I checked on them around four hours later, and as you can see when I open it, they look a bit better, but they still obviously need some treatment. They are still a bit yellow, so I left them out right, for longer. So it's been about eight or nine hours, and the pieces are finally complete, except for the space bar. I had to put that out a bit longer separately, but let's see how it all turned out. Starting with the smallest piece, which is the... Uh, the decorative piece in between the numeric keypad and everything. And that looks pretty, oh, that looks a lot better in my opinion. As you can see, probably remember it from before, but it looks a lot better. It's a lot, uh, it's a lot more platinum gray than beige anymore, which is perfect. So yeah, now time to check the rest of it. All right, so now time to check the rest of the keyboard itself. So, so yeah, I left these out for quite a while. And some of the parts need a lot of treatment. So starting with this part, this other decorative piece, which is where the uh, Apple logo is and the uh, power button. And, this looks a lot better too. It's also like a platinum gray and stuff. This is still a bit beige, which is okay for me because uh, I don't want it to be too new looking because I don't plan on doing the computer itself and I just want it to look better than it did. So that's good enough. Now for the keyboard cover case itself. This is the main thing. And it seems to look pretty good. So it's gonna wash it off. And yeah, it looks pretty good too. Uh, it's mainly this part that needed treatment. That part looks pretty good. And if you compare it with the other piece, they look pretty evenly done. So, without further ado, I guess it's time to put this thing back together. Finally, the keyboard has been, is finished. Now it's maybe a, a little shiny in certain places because there's still some alcohol drying off, but this is the finished product. So the space bar is slightly different color, but this is the closest color I could get um, to the normal color, and it works fine. I was able to put it in properly. Uh, the front is perfect. It's not discolored anymore. Neither is the top. And the whole thing just looks perfect. And now it's actually comfortable to type on. And now the Color Classic is finally finished and working. So I did some of the boring stuff off camera, for example, uh, the floppy drive repair. I just needed to clean the heads and everything works now on that. Uh, the hard drive, I never actually got the hard drive working. I'm hoping to save that for a future video, but uh, for now I just don't have the proper tools and I'm not going to do it in this video. So yeah, uh, the keyboard has been completely finished with the Retrobrite. The mouse, I'm, I'm, I, th I think I'm going to light bright that by just putting it in the sun. I don't really care and it's probably not going to get brittle anyway, so... But anyway, as you can see, everything seems to be working. The screen looks really good now. It's not weird anymore, so that's a good sign. Uh, the logic board works, and everything seems to be working. Uh, 
Oh yeah, I also put a PRAM battery in it, in it, so now it gives me the right date, the right time. I, I don't think the date's right, but the time's right. And I also put some games on this as well. Uh, I was file sharing with a few of my other computers and stuff, and it was pretty, and it was pretty interesting because I haven't really been doing that too often, so I decided why not. So let's try Origin Trail as an example. So you can just open this up. This is one thing I've kind of wanted to do ever since I got this thing. Let's play Origin Trail, because it's a really colorful game. And here it is, and look at how nice that looks. So I'm going to zoom out just quickly. But as you can see, it looks pretty nice on the Color Classic. The screen's really crisp and nice, and the colors are really sharp and everything. And the game works really well. But I'm not going to play it. I'll save that for another video if you guys really want. So, yeah. But anyway, that's all I really have to say about the Color Classic for now. So, now that the restoration is complete, I guess it is time to end the video. So, I hope you all enjoyed this restoration video. Uh, I had fun restoring this. There were some parts that were a bit annoying to do, to do, like cleaning the board and stuff. But the rest of it was pretty fun. And I recommend... Um, I recommend buying broken Macs because broken Macs can sometimes have really easy to fix issues like this one. Uh, I will have to, I'll probably have to do some later repairs in the future if they ever come up, but for now it seems to be working perfectly fine. So yeah, that'll do it for this video. Hope you all enjoyed. Please leave a like, subscribe, and comment down below what you want me to do next. And if you want to see more videos like this, uh, do definitely support me. Uh, with my YouTube and stuff. I have a goal that if I get to like reach like a certain amount of subscribers and views and I can get monetized, I might start making more videos more often, get better equipment. I have a bunch of goals for this channel, but it might never happen, but I eh, guess that's how life works though. So that'll do it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next video. Goodbye.